Today in our 2012 Honda CRV, we're going to be installing Roadmaster's Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit, part number RM 152. And in conjunction with this, we'll be using Roadmaster's 7 wire to 6 wire flexo coil kit, part number RM 146 7. This diode kit is going to allow you to transfer all of your signals from your motorhome back to your vehicle while you're pulling it. So this way when you go left turn on your motorhome, you show a left turn back here so everybody behind you knows what you're intending. The diodes install right into your factory lighting and they provide a pipeline for that signal to go here but also protect it from going to the rest of your vehicle. The diodes act as a one-way check valve that will only allow the current to travel in one direction, towards the bulb not towards the rest of the vehicle. Now there are many options out there to get your lighting signals back here on your vehicle. There's roof mounted options that hook up magnetically, although those require a lot of hookup time. You have to get them out, set them up, run your wire up to the front. And then there's also the bulb and socket style. The bulb and socket style will install inside here as well, but they require you to drill a hole into your tail light. This is a nice elegant solution with these diodes because there's no drilling required. It just taps into your wiring and it's permanently installed and ready to go whenever you need it. Included in your kit, you're also gonna receive a coiled cable, which will allow you to connect your motor home to your vehicle, and a six pole connector here, which is gonna be the interface that your vehicle is gonna get all the signals from. We'll begin our installation here at the rear of the vehicle by removing both of our lower tail light assemblies. Remove the two screws on your lower tail light assembly using an eight millimeter socket. You can also use a Phillips head screwdriver. We'll now pull rearward, and a trim panel remover tool makes it easy to pop our tail light assembly out of its hold-in pins. Remove the connector located here at the top. We're going to strip back the wiring that goes down here. We'll use a razor knife to do so. Get this sheathing off of here. We're going to need to tap into our wiring here. It's a good idea to cut this off as well, just to make sure you've got enough room to make all your attachments. Or you could just slide it up, that, that also works. And just to keep things from being awkward, I'm going to disconnect the rest of our connectors here so I can set the tail lamp assembly aside. We'll need to remove the under panel in order to allow our wiring to pass through up to our tail lights. We'll remove our under panel by taking out the three push pins here at the back and the one in the center. And then there'll be three screws that we'll also need to remove. We'll start with our push pins. Pry out the center with your trim panel remover tool or a flat bladed screwdriver, and then you can pop out the whole tab. We'll remove the three screws with a 10 millimeter socket. And lastly, you'll need to remove one pin from your mud flap here. You can now pull back on your panel and pull it down. We'll then take a fish wire, we're gonna feed it down. We'll now reach up, pull our fish wire, and now we'll connect the wiring that comes in our kit using some electrical tape. I'm gonna make sure you get taped all the way above the top. This way it'll prevent it from getting hung up on anything. And we'll just pull our wiring up. Separate each of your wires. Just use a pair of side cutters to cut between them. You can then pull them back. We'll cut the blue and the red wire right here in the middle, as this is our tail lamp and brake lamp circuits we'll be tapping into. Blue is for brake, red is for tail. Now strip back the end of each of the wires that you just cut and separated. We'll twist our white and brown wire together. We're going to connect that to the yellow tab on one of our diodes. We'll take that off. We'll crimp it on the yellow one. 
Then we'll crimp on a blue connector onto each of the wires that we stripped here. We can now connect our diodes. You'll connect to the connector end of the blue wire to the out on your diode. We'll connect the vehicle side blue wire to one of the ends. And since our blue wire, and since this is for our turn and brake circuit, we're gonna be connecting the yellow wire to the other end. Our other diode is gonna connect similarly. The connector side is gonna to connect to the out on our diode. Red will connect to one of the ends. And our yellow spade terminal here is gonna plug into our other end. You can now clean up some of this wiring. I like to peel back the adhesive backing and just stick these together. You can stick it to somewhere on the inside of the vehicle, but I like to be able to have the freedom of movement in case you ever need to take your tail light out to replace a bulb or anything else. Peel back your green wire, as this wire is going to have to run to our passenger side. So we're going to peel back some of that. Peel, pull this excess wire back down, and we've got our green wire now here. You can then reinstall your driver side tail lamp. Plug your connectors back in. And push it back into place and reinstall your two screws. So here we are on our passenger side. We've got our tail lamp removed, our same connector stripped back, exposing the red and blue wires, and we've got our fish wire ran down to the bottom. Now we'll need to route our wires from the driver's side over to the passenger side and connect it to our pull wire. We'll now begin routing our wiring across. The only wires we really need on this side is the green wire as well as the white wire. The white wire is gonna act as a jumper for our tail light circuit. So we do need to have that over here. Once you've got your wire routed over, make sure that you've got enough excess of the white wire to where you can make it up to your tail light up there. We're then gonna cut out the white wire from the rest of our wires. We'll just snip it in half there. And then we can peel it back. You may or may not need to give it a little assistance by cutting it and separating it. Peel that white wire back. We'll then take our white and green wire, tape it to our pull wire. We'll pull our wiring up now, separate it from our pull wire. We'll cut our red and blue wires just like we did on the other side. Strip back each end of that wire and our white wire as well. We'll now take the blue crimp terminals from our diodes and crimp one on each of the wires that we have here. So that's a total of six. We'll now connect our diodes. On our connector side, we'll put the blue wire on the out of our diode. We'll put the blue wire on the vehicle side on one of the ends. And since this is our turn and brake lamp circuit, we're gonna be putting the green wire that we ran onto the other end of the diode. Our other diode is gonna connect similarly. We'll put the connector side of the red wire on the out. The vehicle side red wire on the in. And the white wire that we ran over, we're gonna connect that to the other side of the end. We'll now plug in our taillight assembly and reinstall this side just like we did our other side. We'll now tidy up our wiring here in the back then take our cable and we're going to route it up to the front. I'm going to route that cable now, tidy this up, and then I'll show you how I did it afterwards. So we bundled up our wiring here at the back. We took the rest of it and ran it up under our cover here over our rear suspension making sure to stay up above the rear axle so we zip tied it to our fuel filler neck here. We went alongside the fuel tank and from there we go underneath this cover here. Now in order to easily get it under this cover there's going to be two push pins and one screw towards the front. The screw uses a 10 millimeter socket. We removed those three so we could pull the lip on the side down and just tucked it under that cover all the way up. Once we got up here, we used our fish wire trick once again. 
and pushed down that airline hose, taped it up back here, and pulled it up alongside the firewall going up. So we pulled it up along the firewall here under our brake booster, came alongside our air box, routed it down underneath the control module, went ahead and taped it up here to the wiring loom on the back of our driver's side tail lamp assembly. We put it here so this way we could access it because depending on the braking system you're going to install, you may need to tap into these wires. So this is a convenient location to make those connections. From there we went alongside our headlight here and then we went straight down along our AC condenser, wrapped it over towards our mounting location for our six pole connector and we just zip tied it to our base plate here. We can give ourselves a little bit of excess so we can pull it out in case we ever need to service it or remove our bumper for whatever reason. We'll cut off that excess we don't need. We'll then separate each wire. We'll strip back each wire. Then take your sleeve from your six pole connector slide it over your wiring. We'll now take our six pole connector. We're gonna make our connections. We'll connect the brown wire to the one labeled TM. Just use our Phillips head screwdriver here to loosen and tighten down these screws. Next is the one labeled GD, which is ground, which will be our white wire. Next we'll have LT, which is left turn, which is our yellow wire. And last, one labeled RT, which is your right turn signal, which is our green wire. Once you've completed making all of your connections, you want to fill the back here with some dielectric grease, and then use some electrical tape to tape up both ends. This will help seal it out from moisture. We're not going to do that right now as we need to make more connections for further things in our flat toe setup. Then you can connect it to your host here on your base plate using the self-tapping screws that come with your base plate. And lastly, we'll need to connect our ground wire. So we're going to connect our ground wire, which is our white wire, just directly to our battery here. So we're going to get our white wire, we're going to cut it here next to the battery. We'll then need to separate that white wire so we can do that. Strip back the end of your white wire and connect it to the blue ring terminal that comes in your kit. We'll now connect our ring terminal to our battery negative post. Remove the nut with a 10 millimeter socket. Make sure you don't lose the nut. Slide your ring terminal on, and then just retighten your nut. You can now plug your vehicle into your RV or our tester, whatever you have here. So now verify that all your lights work. Make sure you check your tail lights, your brake lights, and your turn signals. So now with everything working properly, we'll clean up any wiring that you have left that you need to tidy up, and we'll reinstall our under panel. You'll do that by just reversing the removal procedures. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit on our 2012 Honda CRV.